Well, hi there. How are you doing? This is a bit of a test run. Mostly for my own self. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to go live with this. I don't I don't know if I'm going to upload this. I, I, I believe we're still in Manitoba. It's a glorious day. Glorious. Sparkling morning. Sparkling. It's very windy. I wouldn't want to be uh, trying to screw some screws into a wall today. Those screws are going to fall. It might seem like this screen is a little bit uh, boiling, like it's like it's boiling. Not sure why it's doing that. Now we're just trying some camera angles here for my new trucking channel. Trucking by a war chief. Mm -hmm. Here comes a motorcycle gang. That there's a motorcycle gang. Lord have mercy. left Winnipeg I'm driving down 16 Yellowhead Trail um, when did they build this highway I think I was about uh, 24 years old when I was first on this highway. That goes that goes a ways back. over 20 years. I was young, impetuous, wet behind the ears, kind of young. You can probably see that splotch of grossness on the windshield there. I don't know what that is. It's not me. I'm driving a day cab. Slipstreaming this. Uh, I'm going to facilitate this pass. There's somebody trying to pass me here on this two lane highway. The most courteous thing you could probably do is uh, apply your brakes as a trucker and, and try to facilitate the pass. That way nobody gets hurt. You know, there's a vast majority of truckers that, that just could care less. But if somebody's trying to pass, you know, you might want to be courteous and facilitate that pass. You're not going to lose a lot of time if you apply your brakes for about five to to 10 seconds they'll blast right past you and then you could speed up again and you didn't really lose any time not really 
I always encourage people to do that. Especially on a two-way highway. You never know what's coming around the corner up ahead there. What's coming around the hill. Oh, but this is beautiful land. This is glorious land. Glorious. Check this out. Can you see it? Can you see it? <clears throat> Pardon me. Let me clear my throat. Look at that. You see all my stuff in the, in the reflection of the windshield, but look beyond that. You got to learn to see the forest for the trees. I see roadkill up ahead. I'm going to have to slow her down here. There's nobody behind me. Oh, yeah, poor creature. That looks like a fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox went down. The carrion fowl. It's having their way with them. Feasting on rotting flesh. Highway kill. Well, we got to make it interesting for you. Otherwise, you're just going to switch the channel, and we don't want that. No, sir. We surely don't. We surely, surely don't. Do my best to be as safe as possible, as safe as humanly possible, driving this big rig. But I want to bring you some videos to entertain you and show you what it's like to be a truck driving man. Oh, it's glorious outside, glorious. Actually, if you step out of the truck, it's windy, and and the wind is cool. So even though it's warm out, you can feel the heat leaving the skin of your body. So you're going to need a sweater or a jacket out here. Need something to tie your hair down. Pardon me. Yeah, we're heading west. We're in Canada. 16 Yellowhead. Heading west. traffic for uh, Sunday drive. I guess everybody was out for the weekend and they're probably heading back to wherever they're heading back to. Heavy traffic. I think there's a rock and roll band called Heavy Traffic. Goes back to the 70s, maybe earlier. So this land is a little bit more rugged than uh, Trans-Canada Highway Number 1. Slow down anyways, just in case. There's nobody behind me.
driving in a day cab, they're going to get me a hotel down the road, so that'd be fine. Look at that! Look at that green lawn over there. That's not a lawn. That's someone's uh, someone's yielding something out of there. It already looks like mustard. But look at that glorious sky. All the spirits are having fun up there. Oh, we got a nice road too. This is Blacktop. We just passed Lord Elphinstone Road. You know, when the British defeated the French in the War of 1812, I think that was the one. You know, they didn't, they weren't like, oh, we're going to be nice to the French now that we defeated them. We're at peace. No. No. That's not the way war works. You got to rub it in their face a little bit. And that's just what they did. They hadn't formed to Canada yet. It took them almost uh, another 40 something years, 45 years. 1867 was the Royal Proclamation. Uh, I'm going to give my dates up. Maybe I'm still tired. I don't know. Anyways. British, they weren't too nice to the French, but when they wanted to develop Canada, they called it the Dominion of Canada. They wanted to make Canada British. They were loyal to the crown, so they wanted to make Canada sort of like uh, a, a new, a new England. It was, uh, they were so loyal that even during World War II, when, the, uh, when they thought the Germans were going to invade England, the royal family was getting ready to ship themselves off over here. That's how, that's how loyal Canada was to the crown. And believe you me, they were not nice to the French. When they formulated Canada, they invited all these immigrants, but they wanted British people. They didn't want French people, Ukrainians, Germans, Russians, Czechoslovakians. They didn't want those. Eastern Europeans were socialists. That wasn't, that wasn't what the British wanted. The British were capitalists. But if they were going to come, they were going to assimilate them and turn them into British people. Well, they called it white back then. We're going to make them white. So, Eastern Europeans weren't white, apparently. According to the stories as told in the history books. You're going to want to read Ho Howard Palmer. Patterns of Prejudice to know what happened. then the British gave themselves all the best land to farm. They weren't very good farmers, by the way. But they gave themselves the upper hand. They did everything they could to promote themselves. And they gave the less favorable land to the Ukrainians and the Russians. It was a lot harder to farm. But while they gave them the worst land, they developed a plan to assimilate them into the white race. It didn't take them very long to get assimilated. But that's what you're seeing right here. This is the best possible land that they could have given to themselves. That's why you saw Lord Elphinstone Road. Whenever you see those names that are British sounding, anglicized names that's mostly land that was given to British people 
if you go further north where the land is a lot harsher, those are Ukrainian farmers up there. Wherever the crappiest land is, you're going to see a lot of Ukrainian names. Russian names. You'll see those uh, old Ukrainian churches. Those are the Ukrainian Orthodox churches. And Ukrainian Orthodox Christianity is not the same as Roman Catholic and Anglican Christianity. But if you're going to assimilate into the white race, they'll take you. They take anyone. And if you're willing to take the shittiest land and work it, you can have it. There it is, Elphinstone. Now, I'm not being racist because I'm talking about ethnicities, not races. Ethnicities. Anyways, I talk long enough. The land up here is pretty harsh. It's pretty hard to farm up here. I think a lot of people are cattle ranching up here. But wherever you see good, healthy farmland, you're going to see British names like Strathclair and Elphinstone. Guarantee it. Wherever you see those kinds of names, that's where the best land is. And the British, when they defeated the French, they weren't nice to anyone. They weren't nice to the Indians. They weren't nice to the French. And they definitely were not nice to Ukrainians, Polish, Russians, Germans, Greeks, Italians. But they were, they were a lot nicer to the Northern Europeans, like uh, the Swedes, the Icelandic folk. According to Howard Palmer's book, they said that the uh, Northern Europeans were a lot more like uh, British people than Eastern Europeans because they had monarchies up there. So they liked that seemed like they shared interests in monarchies, authoritarianism, and loyalty to the crown and all. So there we are. That should explain how Strathclair got started and Elephantstone. It's pretty nice here. You'll see a marked difference between these British towns and Ukrainian towns, they totally, the Ukrainians are not as wealthy as, as the British. And they've been here for 200 years, 150 really. Well, all right, I'm heading west. Thanks for joining me. Hope I haven't offended anybody telling that story. It is the truth, it is, it, it is history. You know how I love history, over and out.